Oh, hey. well, welcome to Ascended Fitness Podcast, folks. We have returned. Ooh. Not bad. Ooh. <coughs> yeah, it's, it's a bit... <laughs> that burn gets you. Good. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so... <laughs> oh. It's it's good. It's it's a cave. Beth, one of those kind of uh, bourbons that you have uh, on a nice cold day. But uh, oh my god! So, sorry guys, we I, Garrett. I I bought over my flask of special bourbon, and um, I told Garrett it's a bit of a bite, and I want to celebrate just us returning finally due to scheduling issues, etc. And I think I kind of broke them. Oh my god! <laughs> so this bourbon right now, I held it in my mouth because I really wanted to taste it. it tasted amazing, and then as soon as I swallowed. Holy yeah. shit! <laughs> Out the gate. Okay. Oh my god! Okay. Tasted amazing, but I was not <laughs> expecting that kick. Yeah, it, um, it's it's quite a it's a little bit of the, I don't want it like spicy, you know. It's just uh, this is this is what I'm gonna have in my house, and then when my kid is like, "Oh, can I have some of can I have some of your drink, Dad?" I'll be like, "Yeah," and I'll be drinking like my regular bourbon that I really like, mm-hmm. and then I'll just pour this. To, like, not saying that this is bad. I like it too, but I would just pour this into a glass and be like, "Here you go, son." <laughs> and then he's just gonna be like. <laughs> Well, no, at that point, I and just, then he'll never drink again, <laughs> or just give him a lord and just be. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking be. of a lord, they actually um, they're coming out with another like line of alcohol, from what I heard. Like, yeah, um, it's uh, um, it, like seltzer. Uh, yeah. Um, damn, I've, I had it on my phone the other day, but it's like kind of like the um, they're hopping on the seltzer white chain. claw, whatever you want to call it. But it's it's malort version though. And what's crazy is with Malor for me, I, in which people have followed this podcast for a while, I've mentioned Malor a plethora of times. Plethora. Um, we drank some bourbon and now we know words. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, yeah, we're, we're classy. Yeah, we were classy. Uh, we, we, for me at least, you know, Malor has been one of those things where I, I've shamefully gotten accustomed to it, you know. I've had so many times at this point where it's yeah. okay, it's nothing to me, but um, it's funny to me how you know i'm a lord and if you're not from again chicago or anything like that everyone's like what in the hell is my lord yeah just jepson's my lord and there's a funny youtube video if you get oh, a chance man. watch it it's great but they're 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 marketing on their how awful their their liqueur is pretty and much yeah i think they say like what only like five percent of, of people in the world will like it or some shit yeah like that. yeah it's it's such it's it's a swedish liqueur as they like to, to promote it but they like released a, a bourbon not long ago. They actually wasn't that bad, kind of yeah. surprising. Um, they released, which was foul, and they Carly had it. The, the anti hero malort. It was a collaboration Did with Revolution Brewing. Yeah, I had the bottle. It was awful. It was a Revolution Brewery. It was like a, it was a hoppy malort. Is that the? That's not what we had at your house, was it? It was the hop. Yeah, it, the it one was? time I had you and Carly over at my place. Okay. Yeah, it was. It was that. It was. It was got yeah. awful. I gave it to my buddy Dave. I remember Dave B. Whatever he had it. And he said he had to close his nose just to try it out because of the smell. In which the smell of Malort is awful, but the actual oh hoppy Malort, it was like oh, this is rough. <laughs> so yeah, Malort uh, by itself is just like a horrid smell. And and see, I wouldn't say it's a horrible taste, but it's just. It hits you with a lot of bad taste. Well, that's what it is. It's like it, it's the initial sh- shot back. It's not bad, but then the aftertaste. Yeah, it, it's, that's where it gets you because that's why the little the malort face. Yeah, um, I'll, and I'll it, it's just so many different one like tastes from the aftertaste. You're just like, don't like that. Oh, it changed. Don't like that. Either. And it changed again. Oh, <laughs> will, will you have to bleep me if I say uh, S H O? Yeah. No. Okay. See, I was an asshole, and this is a good story for you guys, and hopefully, people that. Are out in the world that I ruined their night with aren't hearing this right now. Um, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> we, I was with my girlfriend and friends. Uh, we were at a place in Chicago called The Exit. Um, That's what that's called. Yeah, The Exit. And I was talking about that bar the other night. I'm like, <laughs> can't remember the name of it. Oh, we'll still have to go there one day, man. It's a good time. But uh, we, we were there last, it was wrong one time. Oh, that bourbon. No, you, you chugged that, man. You're supposed to sip on it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I got done over with. I um, fucked up. We uh, were there, and, and I was with my girlfriend outside. She's having a cigarette, and I was just shooting the shit with her. And then this couple, I think from California, just came in. And they were, uh, I guess the guy quit his job and got his girlfriend to pursue a music career in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Which, 
cool, you know, and that's that's good for them. But essentially, you know, I think everybody who has had Malort looks forward to the day of giving some outsider a shot. Because yeah, it is kind of like it's just like, it's just like <laughs> one of those like perfect pranks that you always wanted to do, and then you finally get the opportunity to do it. You're just like, yes, that's what it was. It was just like. <laughs> Telling the guy his, his girlfriend was cool, and I was like, "Oh, I'll buy you shots." Like, "Oh, okay, you buy a shot. Choose what you want to do." And I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> wrong, yes. a- wrong answer. <laughs> Why you would you say you meet you? That. You should have just said whiskey, whatever." I'm like, "Okay, choose. All right." And and I know the exit price themselves on having Malort on hand all the time. Do so, they really? Oh, they have. Because yeah, I know bars don't. They don't really do it because it's just a waste of money at that point. Well, and, and I think everybody at I'm pretty sure Malort actually is like a, a top seller there. I could be wrong, mind you. I'm not trying to I guess say I'm at a bar or not. I, I don't know, but I know it's constantly. I see shots of the getting bored there when I'm there, at least. Anyway, we I bring the couple of men with me, you know, and uh, I, I asked the bartender like, "Hey, this has Malort," and I think he was kind of why like, three? Yeah, but I was <laughs> like, just three, and okay, cool, whatever. And it, that's when you go. Is, Big dick energy. <laughs> just all three, right then and there. Just, oh no, bro, Lee has fallen. <laughs> I guess that BDE got to him, man. <laughs> yeah, he kind of just face planted. Oh, God. but do, can you imagine the look on that bartender's <sighs> face? Just like, oh my. God. <laughs> oh my. Oh my. Oh God. So, anyway. <laughs> We, we get the shots, and, and mind you, for me at least, I, I already know what to expect. This poor couple, you know, they they don't know what they're in for. And I know a lot of people try to exaggerate their stories, you know, to kind of get the point across. This one is, is definitely full-heartedly true. It's do the shot, and then I step back and watch their faces. Now, typically, you know, grapefruit, for instance, we bite into grapefruit with like sugar or whatever, kind of like that, you know, yeah. your face kind of pucks up a little bit, but like... The little pucker. It's... It's kind of like a, a tangy z- a zist, whatever, like, ugh, kind of face. They take the shot back, and at first, oh, yeah, it's good, but then the aftertaste kicks in. Yeah. And I call it the Malort face because it's, like, the cringy, and then, like, they, they don't know if they should breathe, you know? They, they don't. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's pretty much the face of, like, disgust that's being held back because they don't want to offend someone. Yes. Because they just bought them a shot. <laughs> and what I did was, which is where I, I, I was an asshole, I was like, cheers, took a shot, and then backed off, and then they, and then... I kind of watched from afar as it hit him. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I ruined their night because he looked so pissed off at that. <laughs> we were having a good time here in Chicago. We were having a good time. Yeah, and then... Him this and is a guy. business trip. <laughs> <laughs> we're here on business. <laughs> so I, I go back and I, I go back to the back area towards the pool. Wait, wait, um, wait, tell me, tell me. But, Oh, good God. Oh, my, <laughs> that's a good old my moment. But essentially, what I'm trying to say is, I was an I was an asshole, and uh, a lot of these poor people. Good God, that was my fart. Good God, I'm sorry. Just looking at the yeah, audio yeah, clip. Yeah, I picked it up. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is, you know, it, to go off your story, you know, if I was to do that, I'd be like, oh, hey, here you go, have some bourbon. But it's actually the Lord, and it's like, <laughs> you know, laughing in their faces. Just watch the kids. But you're not gonna drink mm-hmm. now. All alcohol tastes like this. All no, of it. <laughs> <laughs> All of it. Well, I wanted to say first and foremost, guys, from from that guy Tom, it's uh, good to be back. Um, you know, unfortunately with me and uh, schedule has been kind of hectic uh, with work and then also outside stuff. And I thank God for my best friend, Coach Gear, for being patient with me. And he also has been facing his own challenges and, and stuff like that too. So we <laughs> definitely apologize for being a little delayed with getting out podcasts, but yeah. we're gonna get back to routine and. Uh, looking forward to just being back and doing this again, you know? Yeah, definitely. It's nice to have Tom back. Um, and this is it for all of you that are... That was very echoey. I Sorry. Need, hold on. I got this. Here. There you go. Yeah, nice and silent. Um, but yeah, so for those of you that are just tuning in or um, just maybe uh, lost it in uh, the podcast, Tom is a pretty much a visual special effects makeup artist um for a place called midnight uh midnight terror right oh yeah i gotta plug my i can never remember if it's midnight horror or midnight terror 
Midnight Terror Haunted House. Yeah, like um, a little mask. It's, it, it's, it's in Oklahoma, and it's like, what, off like 100 and... Third and Central. It's 111th, like 111. Right, it's right past like a block or two away by the bridge, past the Marianos. Like, yeah, right, 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 right by the cemetery. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, because it is. It's like a block east, a block or two east of Central. Yeah. Um. Yeah, off 111th, and it honestly from the outside it doesn't look like a haunted house. Um, it's a little, a little old factory, I would say. It, 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 it's pretty much yeah. It's an old factory that they they furbished into. What's really awesome. So it's not just like. During like the end of September and then all of October and then a little bit in November, like the first first week of, first week of November is like clown takeover. Yeah, they do they do a haunted house and then they do like they do like a Christmas theme stuff, but then also part of it they also have axe throwing. They have a really cool arcade in there, and then there's also a uh, um, escape rooms, escape rooms and laser tag too, and laser tag yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, it's a fully functioning. Um, like all year round kind of thing, just kind of cool. Yeah, so it's just it's it's a nice. Um, honestly, to me, it's a really nice. Like I guess, older teen, young adult uh, mm-hmm. hangout place. Like because yeah, you get the axe throwing, which in, I'm Ooh. assuming. My turn. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. We just lost my. Hundred, we just lost hundred people right now listening. <laughs> but uh, it, it's really awesome because yeah, you have the arcades. It's like who doesn't love arcades? Yeah. Um, and then and yeah, you yeah, have Killer Instinct, the House of the Dead, there too. Oh. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, axe throwing. Who doesn't want to sh- throw sharp objects? I'm oh, sure right. that's eighteen above though, right? Yeah. It's Unless a, you have like a parent with you, yeah. or and they they have like. It's crazy because they actually have like a variety of axes you can choose from, from like a light one to like a heavy one, and like I didn't know like there was so many different axes that can be used to throw at things and stuff like that. Yeah, so you can choose your weapon of choice, and then also they have like games you can play there with the axe throwing too. It's it's kind of cool. That's pretty cool. I didn't know about the games, and then they're they have a really cool laser tag system set up too. Um, out of and then I never. Um, like saw the escape rooms, but I heard I heard people going through them. Well, yeah, <laughs> but my girlfriend has um, she's she well not anymore because it's off season technically. But she worked the escape rooms and whatever. She tells me that they're very popular. I think there's like three or four at the haunted house. I mean, right now again, it's not yeah. open because of the haunt, but uh, there are like a medium or easy than like a hard one and all that kind of stuff and and yeah it's good reviews across the board at least so that's good, yeah. good to hear so it, it's a very nice place so if you live in the the cook county even the will county area um and was that dupage county i think so yeah so i would say like in, in either of those counties like because then it's like about a 45 minute drive um please check it out it's called midnight terror haunted house so yeah like uh, 111 street just like uh off of uh, just a little east of central um, and do they still have the big truck up front? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the military truck. And yeah, so pretty much look for the big deuce and a half military truck up front. Um, and then I know during a haunt season they do put up like bigger signs and stuff. They do. And this uh, quick, quick, quick thing is that guys, we do are we are compliant to COVID? Um, um, yes. COVID standards, whatever. We we have a new system. If you want to go check it out and quick plug, and we're going back to our main topics, whatever. Uh, it's on lot. It's reserved only at this point. Uh, you can't just walk in anymore. The haunted house. You get to book a book a time. Reserve every time to come to the haunted house. We. So I know the the building crew, which they worked their asses off. Props to them. Uh, worked out every room so that it was COVID distance, social distance, safe, whatever. Not very um, cool. All actors have to wear are wearing masks too. Uh, you temp check at the door as well as you know quite wear a mask in. So guys, you know don't be afraid. Uh, so with that, actually, just out of curiosity, with um, with you being the makeup artist and them wearing masks, do you f- try and fit the mask into their costume design? Well, what's crazy is like tonight, uh, around six ish, before I had to leave a little bit earlier to go to the haunted house, but we're makeup teams having a meeting tonight because we are pretty much only doing from the nose and the eyes up, not from makeup yeah. because of the mask. So that's a a new challenge. I didn't know, um, like, because I didn't know if you guys were going to try and, like, still do, like, makeup on the mask. We, or I, I, if you're going to try and incorporate them into the design of, like, if it's, like, a nurse or something, like, kind of, like, do some blood splatter on it or something like that. But There there are, t- I, again, like, I'll get more, I think, clarification tonight. Yeah. Um, cause our first meeting, um, well, our, our, our first only meeting for the rest of the season. Um, but we are going to have to work with, you know, masks, and I'm pretty sure they're going to have, like, them already oriented with or according with the costumes etc okay. um but it, it's it's challenging though because i mean you know 
whether it's close with the costume or not, you know, you're, you're having to do makeup on only part of the face, and you yeah. have to make sure it looks good and looks great because, you know, the customer, they can't see, you can't cut up the face anymore, you know? Yeah. So, you know, you get to be six feet apart from the actor and the customer, so you have to make sure it looks good, but also realize that, A, at this point, you know, you have to make it look somewhat popping, yeah. And there's going to be spots in the room where it's going to be dark, whatever, you know. So it's a new challenge, which I'm looking forward to, but also it, it sucks with COVID that now, you know, you have to kind of, like, reshape your whole routine with makeup, whatever. Yeah, and all it's, that it's, a, it's a huge thing. Now, are you guys um, doing any type of price differences? Like, did you lower the price because you thought maybe people are going to be, like, a little less satisfied due to the mask, or did you increase prices because of all the extra stuff that you had to go into? That's a good question that I don't know. Okay. Um, I, I, mean, I was just curious on how, how that was being handled business-wise. I'm, I'm pretty sure, I mean, we've had to make changes to adjust. Like, we also had to invest in the Fluggers. Yeah. Um, I mean, which they have, like, the Ghostbusters vacuum one, which, like, the backpack uh, compared to one the one I use in my job, but they had invested yeah, in like those the two. Gun. Yeah, the, the the doom. Like remember I said that video of me. <laughs> um, but it was uh, they got one of those. Then they're gonna be going every hour and fogging all the rooms down. But Very I, cool. I can see them if it is you know having to obviously raise the price a little bit because I mean you're we had to pay a little more extra into stuff getting rebuilt due to yeah. COVID standards, or whatever and. I know with us, we're Region 3, but Region 1, I'm pretty sure Illinois, they ban haunted houses. Really? Yeah, I know. Um, because of the close contact Yeah, and stuff. COVID. Uh, I think pretty sure Pritzker, I, I, I'd look more into it, but I read an article the other day about it where I think Region 1, they're pretty much not allowing any haunted houses, and then rumor has it possibly trick-or-treating for that matter too yeah i know some places they already like limited trick-or-treating like so uh they put limitations mm -hmm. on like group sizes and then other places are just like no trick-or-treating is still on and it to me i'm like well i don't see why it should be banned because this is most, the best holiday i would say for it you know i mean it's the it's best. like you're outside but then majority of the costumes have masks correct on them. so it's like you're covering their nose and their mask or and their mouth with a hard plastic, I'm like, yeah, if you want to then put a regular mask, like like a regular like cloth whatever cloth mask, you. and then have their mask on top of it, that's like extra protection to put the regular mask over depending on what kind of costume they are. I'm like, I don't see why, why not. And most of the time when I see people going around, it, it's not that big of a group anyways. Mm -hmm. There's probably like three, four kids, and then like the adults, so I'm like, okay, eight people, that's not... Like, I think, what, the, they're still limiting it to, like, six, but I'm like, okay, there's two more. Yeah. Or, but it's like, in my cousin's uh, case, I have five godchildren, so then her, so that's six already, <laughs> so it's like, uh, so the dad can't go? Yeah, or, uh, yeah. Like, like, so, yeah, so it's like, what do you kind of do with that? Or it's like, they can't go with any of their friends from school, or like, so, uh, it's, well, to me, though, it, it's... Like, I'll be, I, I get it, they want to be safe, but at the same time, it's like, well, at the same time, can you have a little bit of courtesy and common sense? Well, that's what it is. is that, I mean, all people have been, like, making, like, PVC, like, tubes to shoot the candy. Yeah, yeah, I saw yeah. That. And that, like, people are doing their best, excuse me, to, um, like, adjust to uh, or make, like, a better social distancing, like, thing for Halloween. But, I mean comes down to common courtesy again, you know, everybody's wearing masks, whatever, all kind of stuff, I don't see it being a total issue, and also, I mean, one thing I want to touch base upon is, if you're sick, just stay home, yes. let's say it one more time, if you're sick, just stay home, don't try to push it, so I mean, Halloween, you know, it, it, it definitely could be a holiday to where everyone will win, you just gotta have everyone in the same mentality, but I know, unfortunately, you have to kind of plan for the worst because people out there are, I don't know, dumb. Uh, <laughs> and a lack of better words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, I do hope, though, that, you know, the haunt goes smoothly and then moving forward to that um, Halloween, for that matter, will we'll go smoothly, too. Yeah, uh, definitely. It's my favorite my favorite holiday. Um, my favorite holiday is Thanksgiving. Oh, so it, that's what's so funny about me. It's I used to actually, like, despise Thanksgiving. 
And what? yeah, when I was a kid, I, and probably was because, you know, like, A, I was a kid where I'd be my family and talk about things. It's like, oh, disgusting. Just kidding, guys. I love you. Half kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't really give a, you know, a, a, a big old shit about the food, but now I got older and my palate, like, changed out of nowhere it's yeah. like oh, God, I, want, I love stuffing you know I want some like gravy on my turkey man or, I think it's just becoming an adult <laughs> yeah, I, that's probably what it is too it's like you know yeah. just stuff my face on my comatose you know and call it a day but I, I come to love Thanksgiving that's actually my second favorite holiday my third favorite holiday I would say um, has to be probably 4th of July and that's because it's just summer outside and you're blowing shit up and you get to see Garrett beyond drunk that was that was a good that was a fun night that was a fantastic night and i think t- so tom has only ever seen me drunk twice one was mm-hmm. at a wedding and that was because he screwed up no he intru- i didn't you introduced no, me I to didn't. cranberry and, and bourbon. bourbon yeah it's, yeah i never it's a- had that and it was amazing and then the, yeah the second time was yeah fourth of july well, because you had a bot you had a gary bottle full of um it was, well, it was the vitamin water. Yeah, the vitamin water. And, and then vodka. Yeah, so the vitamins waters that I get is from Costco. It's called Vitarain, and they have, like, a little dome on top. So I would just drink the dome of worth of it, and then i just <laughs> fill it, it back up, and then I would top it off with vodka. So it went from having, like, a three-quarter handle of vodka down to, like, a quarter. Yeah, it was pretty much demolished. And then I think when it just turned nighttime outside is when you went from, like, sober Garrett to, like, Hammered. Hammered. And the great thing is about you when you're hammered, and Carly showed me a pinnacle, like a picture of it when you were at her place and you got hammered out that mead. Oh, yeah. Like crawling, whatever. You were, it was kind of funny, you know, you were like happy, but like just a pure, like unadulterated, like happy, like (laughs) you were your fork in a sense, and it was like the most funniest thing I've ever seen out of our friendship for how many years at this point. It's like, I've never seen him this happy about getting drunk in my life. It's awesome. <laughs> I, I think it was just like what made it best was um, just the reaction between you, Angie, and Carly because I was telling you all freaking year about how amazing the fireworks are by my house. Yeah. And you guys were all like, yeah, we get, have, we get fireworks too by my house. I'm like, no, dude, oh, cool. guys, like it's a three, like it's, it's a 360 view, like above mm. and just all around. And they're like, okay. And then, like, fireworks started going off. And, like, I saw all three of you just looking at me. It was like, fucking really? Oh, whoa. <laughs> There's one. There's one. <laughs> yeah. but it was just this time. <laughs> it, it was just like, really, Garrett? This is your 360 <laughs> view? And I'm just sitting there and I'm just like, just you wait, other truckers. Just, just wait. And then, like, half an hour, it got dark. And then it was just like, constantly. Like, pretty much. I think moving forward, AJ going to come here for 4th of July because he wasn't joking. Like, he, we sat down in his backyard. Gary has a nice little setup in his backyard with, like, a fire pit and then chairs around in the back in the back area and literally, like, north, east, south, west, it's like, it was just awesome to see. And even us driving home yeah, down 79th Street, oh, it's fireworks just- as far as I could see, it's like, man, we literally, I did not know what uh, what it meant or like the closest I've had to like a, a fireworks show was the Evergreen Park one yeah the professional ones kind of thing but this one like just coming here was like awesome yeah. dude cause there's uh, two blocks away there's this um, and you can't really see it from my house because of just all the trees but I'm sure if I go, we go on the roof idea for later mm-hmm. um, <laughs> you, you'd be able to see it but there's this guy that just spends thousands upon thousands and like you're like oh okay like my uncle does it too it's like no this guy comes in with a box truck worth of fireworks and he'll he he has it set up where he does the electric um uh like starter or whatever yeah the electric yeah. starter where it, like he could key it to music and stuff so he'll be, he'll like literally have music playing like the star spangled banner and stuff and it'll be shooting them off as it's going, so, so it's all cool. it, and it's it's all professional grade equipment that he has to um, detonate all these fireworks, and it's amazing. And you could you could kind of hear it from my house, but um, yeah, if you like go on the roof, or if we had just like a better um, clearing um, from all the trees, it'd be a lot better. But it's amazing. Um, but how did we get on that? Well, I'll stop on my three favorite holidays because oh, yeah. yeah, Halloween yeah, yeah. and then Fourth of know, July. Yeah. Um, but so going to going into November though, it's going to be getting cold out. I mean, ready kind of had yeah. a couple chilly days here and there in the fall. For me, it's in the morning. Dude, this work. weather is weird. It is. It's, um, it's that time of year in Chicago where you wake up and it's forty degrees and you're like, oh my window. god. 
And then, you, so you, you put on your long pants, you put on your, your like, semi-winter jacket. You, we have different levels of winter jackets. Yes, yes. And everyone in Minnesota are probably like, mm, stupid. And it was like, yeah, you guys are, like, the only ones that could talk. <laughs> <laughs> but it, like, but they understand it, too. It's like, yeah, they're, they're going to have, like, different levels of winter jackets. It's like, oh, it's 30 degrees? Put on this light winter jacket. But, yeah, we put on our light winter jackets. We go to work, and then we get off of work. And what's the temperature? 85. Yeah. Like, it changes within 50 degrees within, like, within 10 hours. You're just like, how? Last, last Tuesday, it was dropped on, like, 14 degrees. I had frost in my windshield. And I wore my my winter hoodie and my black thick cargo pants. And then I felt the temperature change at the, uh, well, I'm about to see my job, my my work area. um, And I, like, wait a minute. It's getting hotter outside, yep. and I'll be damned. Like I go out around like twelve thirty, I'm like, it is seventy something degrees outside. I'm like, well, this is a waste. Yep, I'm sweating, sweating my ass off already, and I'm ready in a place where a big, big. It was just, yes, it's crazy here with with the the constant changes in weather, you know. And thankfully, this weekend it's been great. But yeah, this this week was a little bit more tame. Um, yeah. Monday and Tuesday was still kind of rough, but then it stayed in like. It, like the lower the lows were like fifty five, and then Good the, fall the uppers were like seventy five. So you know, regular, but. Um, yeah, so it, not unlike last year where it actually snowed on Halloween. Well, see, um, my girlfriend and I, we went uh, for our anniversary. We had a plan in Illinois, but then they got shot to shit, which that's, that's the point. Um, we went to Crown Point, Indiana. Which is uh, a nice place. Oh, the place is awesome. Man. Yeah. I just wish we would have left earlier because everything closes down in that town, like around 5 o'clock. Really? After, yeah, like we were got there and we went to one store, I think. Oh, we went that to Crown. Sucks. With the Crown Crown Brewing first, which they had, oh, I wish I could have bought a growler home. They had a, a beer called the Dude. It was a white Russian style. A dude, the or Dude, like, like from the, the Big Lebowski. Yeah, yeah, okay. called the Dude, and it was awesome. It was a white Russian white Russian stout, and it was like candy. And that that Hershey's, uh, by the way, yeah, awesome. That Hershey's Yingling, the one that I'll probably posted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phil got a six pack. Um, I uh, in Indiana. It, it was, anyway. Um, well, with the weather, though, I was going to say, though, it was nice leaving Illinois, but then going to Indiana, all of a sudden, temperature dropped, and it was cold and rainy, but also, they had their Oktoberfest that weekend, too. Oh, that's cool. And it was kind of nice, because they had, like, heaters under the dome area where they were having it at, so, although, the problem was, though, is that I dressed too light, so I thought it was, like, it was hot here. Yeah. So, I left Indiana, and it's like, <laughs> sucks. <laughs> Dude, it, you know? it, it, it's, it's really weird, just how that lake effect really hits you. Well, that was like with um, Carly. Uh, she, she used to live all the way up on the north side, and uh, before uh, she moved over to Canada, there, eh? Um, uh, she she came and lived with me for about uh, closer to two months. I want I would I would say, pretty much, yeah. Like yeah. the end of the end of COVID, um, quarant- uh, quarantining, um, and uh, just the half hour drive. So. Yeah, from all the way up on the north side to the south side, just south of uh, the Midway Airport, um, it was like a ten degree difference. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I ne- I never realized it. She's like, it's like obviously she's came to my house, but um, she just never really fully felt it. And it was such a huge difference for her because there's no lake effect anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it would be like cool. And and I was telling her, it's like this is why I can never pack right for your house because I don't, I just don't, <laughs> don't know. know. <laughs> I'm like, I just don't understand. It's like it, I'll dress and it'll be like if it's winter, I'll dress and it's nice and warm by me. But then I get over you and it's freaking freezing. Yeah, yeah well, it, it's. I remember once you when concerts were still a thing. Concerts. Oh god, I miss those. Well, days. they still are. Uh, well, they're yeah, just in your car. Live stream or or you know whatever. And I'm hoping yeah by next year it will change, but. I went to a concert last winter time, and out here, forty is something, whatever, not bad. It's okay. I can wear a hoodie because I, I want to dress as last I possibly can at a concert because I'm gonna get hot to the yeah. actual venue. Oh god, that's a bad thing about concerts. Uh, in yes, the because I mean you're 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 dressing for the weather outside. Then you go inside, and then all mine is gonna be different moving forward. But you're also many bodies that like you're just warm if not. I'll be getting sweaty like I am. Mm-hmm. And I'm from the first side of the band, and I went with a friend of mine, and I wore like a like a dumbass, well, a thick long sleeve, another pair of black cargo pants, and then a heavy hoodie because I thought, you know, hey, it's a little colder out downtown. It was, it was freezing, 
Get in the menu though, and I'm just sweating bullets. They're just <laughs> cranking the yeah. heat. And then what I hate about that is when you leave, leave the venue and you're covered in sweat, go back to the bitter cold. Yeah. It hits like a brick wall. Like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> it, 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 the fresh air hits you, and then it, 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 it actually physically just assaults you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, but that's why. So, I mean, moving forward, you know, we're going, going into, you know, the wintertime and going into. Uh, you know, health issues, I would say, with flu and, and going into sleeping patterns and, and all that kind of stuff changing. Yeah, so what Tommy's getting at is let's segment into the health and nutrition segment of the show. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, but Transition. Yeah, what, what I wanted to talk about is, um, yeah, it's 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 um, daylight savings time now, so we're, yeah, did we go back an hour yet? Not yet. Not yet, so Not it's yet. about it's, to. I think it's November. Um, Seven, it's, it's close, going close. I yeah, so it's about to be daylight savings time. Usually what daylight savings time is, yeah, we, we fall back an hour. Um, and uh, it pretty much, yeah, it, there's so much darkness in the world now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's a my old friend. Friend. But, yeah, it's, it's one of those days where, yeah, the sun is setting at, like, so November. Yeah, yeah so, so November 1st. Um, so, yeah, about three weeks away. And... Uh, but yeah, with daylight savings time happening, that's when like yeah, the sun will be setting at like five thirty at night, mm-hmm. and it won't be coming back up until like seven in the morning. And we're already kind of like experiencing that now with just a little bit more darker days. Yes. And uh, um, so some things that I wanted to point out is usually when this is happening, especially in the winter with snow and everything, is um, people start to get pretty much hay fever. Um, yes. That they get their uh, the, or not hay fever, sorry, cabin fever, um, and. Uh, with with it, yeah, they're just. We've already been experiencing this due to the yeah, yeah, um, yeah, through summertime through through summertime because we we weren't really allowed to go anywhere because there was nothing open. Um, but some of you really felt it, and it'll be really hard um, this year. And uh, it, it's just depression and anxiety mm-hmm. um, because you're you're not going outside anymore, um, and you're not really seeing anybody. And you're not doing the things that you normally were just doing for the like half the year um, of going to the beach, going out with friends, going to movies and concerts and and shows, and uh, even just going outside for like you can still go yeah. outside and hiking, but you might not be able to do it as much anymore because a lot of the forest preserves they close down at sunset, um, and most people are they're getting off of work at sunset now, uh, and so depression and anxiety kicks in. Um, why does that happen, Tommy? Why does that happen? I do mean, you know, do you know? Well, chemical imbalances first and foremost, mm-hmm. and, um, but also the lack of daylight. I would say too. Yeah. So um, the biggest one is is the lack of daylight does mess with um, your chemical balances and vitamin what, D. Yeah. Um, sorry, what was that? Vitamin D, right? Yeah, vitamin D. Yeah. That's the biggest one. Um, and uh, it pretty much, yeah, it, it sets off um, just, hold on, I'm cleaning my nail right here. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching him clean his nail. Um, it's like speaking this whole dialogue about this whole, like, educated answer to what's going on. <laughs> yeah, so pretty much, um, let me let me give you the full scientific um, uh, definition of vitamin D let me, as I pull it up on WebMD here. Yeah, because um, yeah, we're prepared, right? <laughs> but the biggest thing with, yeah, right, um, I used to be, but now I'm just like, they'll hear the clickety-clack of my keyboard. So um, vitamin D is, uh, that's not what I wanted. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, there we go. But so vitamin D is uh, pretty much one in, in charge of, oh my god, I don't care about rickets. <laughs> Jeez. All right, that this Google, you failed me. You failed me what I wanted to do. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Anyway. Um, apparently, they really like talking about rickets in here. Uh, um, okay, but yeah, so you get vitamin D naturally through a lot of sunlight, and that'll help with um, pretty much a good majority of things, um, such as uh, the biggest one is just your immune system. Um, and fun fact, uh, they believe that the Vikings were so successful um, because their immune systems were so strong due to uh, their vitamin D intake from um, 
What's that fish? It starts with a C. Carp. Um, no, not carp. Oh, my God. Um, my brain is just shit today. And what's sad, so fun fact, too, vitamin D also works with your cognitive <laughs> side. <laughs> so maybe I'm not doing so good. <laughs> God, get to go God. outside more. That's the fish, cod. Cod, okay, yes. Um, so, yeah, so Vikings, um, they, they, they pretty much, they ate a lot of, like, cod jerky, I guess you could say. They just ate a lot of, like, dried out and extremely salted cod. And they believe that was linked to why they were so great at traveling the seas, especially during harsh winter mm-hmm. months, because um, they would stay nice and healthy. They would stay nice and cognitively aware, um, and uh, they would just have the energy levels because they were ha- they had such great storage, um, pretty much storage tanks of vitamin D. Mm-hmm. And where everyone else in the world, they were experiencing harsh, harsh winters. They weren't getting natural vitamin D from the sun, and they didn't have cod or any other uh, foods that were uh, vitamin D enriched. Um, so they were getting sick. They were dying, hence the like bubonic plague. Yeah. They were pretty much killing themselves. Their like, suicide rates were, they believe, um, were a little bit higher. And they just didn't have the energy levels um, to train as well as to defend their lands. So the Vikings would come in, and they, they, these people, they would see them as complete berserkers just because of um, how well taken care of they were, simply be, just due to vitamin D um, and and that. But um, uh, uh, what's it called? But, yeah, vitamin D plays a, a big role in um, just uh, staying... Um, cognitively healthy as well as keeping your immune system in check and um, from what I've I, I'm not a uh, um, like I'm not I don't specialize in um, with much in the endocrine system so like hormones and all mm-hmm. that but from what I do know the vitamin D does play a big um, role with um, just the chemical makeup of hormones that affect your brain and cognitive and it like obviously cognitive alertness but um, with that actually uh, yeah like that's what could affect your anxiety and depression too um, is just low levels of that Um, yeah but uh, so yeah that's the biggest one is because we don't have sun and then yeah in the winter what's the biggest thing that we see in Chicago (laughs) or the, 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 the thing that we don't see a lot in Chicago we just don't actually see the sunlight. Yeah. It's always cloudy. Yeah. Um, so, and that's just in winter in general. There's a lot. It, mm-hmm. There's just a lot more clouds, um, and the air is also drier too. Yes. Um, yes. <coughs> that's why you make sure. I mean, for me, it's been loading up on vitamins every day moving forward. You know, I mean, I take my vitamins. Yeah. I, I do my also as, as plain as it is my OJ in the morning too. Mm-hmm. And, and I become a big fan of actually um, um, black tea now. Black tea for yeah. I've been doing like that in the morning because I'm trying to actually stop with uh, Monster and, and Red Bull. Yeah. Um, I'm noticing like all of us be getting older or whatever, but that's just a hell of a lot of sugar at once in the morning. It and does. also, we got to kind of start considering moving forward in wintertime. Um, you want to have your immune system primed ready to go and, and yeah. nothing really compromising it with what you even eat and digest. Uh, so that's why. And the the reason why I bring up winter air and the dryness of it is um, a lot of people experience um, bronchitis, as mm. you know. Oh, yeah. Um, they yep. experience more flu-like sy- symptoms. They um, experience, um, what is it called? Post-nasal drip. I Not post-nasal drip. When you get... Uh, strep throat. Or so yeah, strep throat. Sorry. I'm like, uh, my... I don't know why my head is like this today. Is that bourbon? I, maybe. <laughs> damn. Um, but, uh, yeah, so pretty much the moisture in the hair, it does help actually keep your, your obviously, your throat um, moist, but that also will help with um, any type of bacteria mm-hmm. that is stuck uh, on it. That's actually, um, that's why they say if you are having any type of, like, um, strep throat feelings or bronchitis feelings or salt water um salt water or just warm water in general because one the heat will try like try and kill the bacteria but also will flush anything that's sticking down onto the back of your throat um and back of your mouth too into your gut which will then try to kill it um so the the moisture in the air does play a lot a lot too but it also does play in fact with asthmatics as well because um it's just harder to breathe with drier air um so 
it, there's a lot more health concerns coming on into winter, so it is more uh, imperative to just basically just uh, be a little bit more conscious of what you're doing, who you're around, and um, and what you're doing, like so washing your hands and stuff before touching your food and, and where your hands were at or where you, how close your face is at to something. Um, and right now also I was talking to um, my friend, uh, too who's like a, who's medical professional and pretty much our theory with this whole uh the COVID thing too and why it was such a huge hit on when it was it is um at least for us in america it was um it was it was winter time and that's the height of mm-hmm. our flu season and it hit um it hit new york hard because it was a little bit colder and, and there's a lot more people moving around and the flu just naturally sp- spreads in lack of better terms, here you go, Donald Trump, bigly. <laughs> uh, it, 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 it affects them more bigly there. Um, and so we, we, we were thinking, it's like, yeah, like people are probably already getting the flu. It, it's winter time. Their immune systems are already in the tank. They're getting the flu. It's even worse. Um, flus, naturally flus, by, they, last, they could last a week. They could last two weeks. Um, they run their course essentially. They, they, yeah, they run their course, but yeah, in that in that week span, like yeah, it's it's it, your there's your your immune system is almost in the negative at that mm-hmm. point, and if you're hitting COVID, bam, you're getting COVID, and then this is going into a giant um, like like lung attack, and it, it, it could lead to then pneumonia, which a lot of people were seeing that the death um, causes the death cause of COVID was like pneumo- pneumonia like symptoms or pneumonia in general because they were saying I think it was like aspirin they were giving aspirin and then Motrin and it was going into full on pneumonia because mm-hmm. of it and um, so we, that's, that's what we're, we're theorizing on why it was so bad to hit when when we did get hit and um, it was just a really bad flu season too so you're getting flu you're getting these people that are just recovering from flu, the flu or having it then they're getting COVID and the COVID as everyone knows um if you have underlying conditions, it was making everything even yes. worse. Um, which then, yeah, if it could lead to pneumonia. Pneumonia by itself is huge on your lung capacity, your VO2 max. Um, it's huge onto your heart because, yeah, it's not getting as enough oxygen, so the heart is even going worse, um, pumping a lot harder. And it, it, then it's also effect, affecting your, your the rest of your body with your organs because it's not getting as enough oxygen Correct. as needed. Um, so it just goes in the tank. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why it is important uh, now more than ever to stay really up on your health. So um, I kind of already led into it with the – so there's not as much vitamin D anymore. The biggest thing that you could do to help with vitamin D is obviously um, you could either eat vitamin D-enriched foods. They already have that with cereals. They have it with um, OJ and stuff like that. You could get your vitamin C as well as vitamin D and calcium. And fun fact too, vitamin D – works with calcium phosphate and magnesium for your bone health Mm -hmm. so that is one thing um that that is really good and that that you should also just be considerate of um especially with women that are older due to osteoporosis um if you are worried about that make sure that you're also including vitamin d within your health so you could have uh, a good combo of vitamin d magnesium um potassium and uh calcium um so you could have nice bone health. Um, but, yeah, so, and then I was also talking about it with cod. Cod has an amazing, um, the nice thing about cod is, yeah, it has uh, so much vitamin D, but then also it has the omega fatty acids as well. So you're getting the, the pretty much your fish oil um, that everyone knows it has, and then your vitamin D. And if you're not a big fish fan, um, they do sell the cod liver oil, um, which, um nice thing then about liver too is then you're also getting some iron in it too so those liver those cod liver oils you're getting mega fatty acids you're getting a little bit of iron and you're also getting um uh, vitamin d and so it's like a a nice all-around pill the only negative thing that i would get from it is you you still get those fish oil burps um but really it's it just uh you know just down it with some bourbon <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then i'll make sure anything you had yeah or, gonna or be. some alert oh that. <laughs> um so what would you say that moving forward i mean it, for someone like me you know i just take one men one a day men's health vitamins uh, so what, what else could i be i guess incorporating into my morning pers- diet? 
Personally, um, I'm not a fan of the one a day health pills, the one, like the, the multivitamin pill. And that's simply because um, a lot of uh, vitamins, they actually counteract each other. Um, so the biggest one I want to say is vitamin C with calcium. If you take those together, the vitamin C actually negates a lot of ESP. Um, a lot, you're just gonna hear a nice look, 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 look. Um, vitamin C negates a good majority of the calcium. But I do want to say that a lot of these companies know that and they want to take into consideration of, of all those different vitamins that are attacking each other and negating each other. And they really rack up the percentages of it. Like if you look at it, it'll be like vitamin C like 100%, but calcium is like at like 600%. So that's why when you are looking at multivitamin pills and you're like, well, why am I having a pill that has it like 900%? Um, that's because the 200% um, uh, mineral or vitamin that is also in there is probably negating some of it. So they're trying their best to keep it all together so you could still have that multivitamin, but um, the downside is, yeah, it negates it. Also, some of them are water soluble, some of them are fat soluble. So. You, um, that being said is you know, drinking them with water having staying very hydrated so they can be digested well but then also uh, having th having them with a meal that has uh, fat content in it so that's actually why when you're eating um, a salad and they have uh, like vinegar and oil yeah the oil is the fat content so salad dressing was pretty much originally made um, for like for taste and everything but um, people started feeling better from it because, well, one, uh, the, the oil keeps you a little bit full, fuller because of the fat content, but um, it also helps your body digest the, the oh, vitamins shit. and absorb the vitamins and minerals. Um, so they just felt better after it, too. And was it a, like was it a little thing that they're like, oh, I just kind of like the taste, or was it like a, a subconscious thing where they knew that their body was feeling better subconsciously, so they just kept doing it. It could have been either or, but um, scientists later found out that, yeah, this is pretty much the perfect thing is to put um, some type of uh, f fat content into your salad. Whoa. So cheese, oil, egg, um, anything like that, so you could absorb the like your spinach, your spinach kale mix a lot better. Um, so leading back to it, um, yeah, your one-a-day vitamins are fine. Um, the two biggest thing is eat them with a meal. So if you're eating them in the morning, like a majority of people do, try and eat them with like you know like bacon and eggs, or you, if you're doing like cereal, cereal and whole milk, or something that has, or even just with yogurt or cottage cheese, something that has a good fat content in it. Um, simply so then all those vitamins that are fat soluble can be digested and absorbed properly. Um, also, try and stay away from calcium while um, having these for the first hour or so. Or not calcium. Oh, my God. Caffeine. Sorry. <laughs> try, try and stay away from caffeine. Cause, again, a lot of people that are doing their vitamins are taking them in the morning. Yeah. So they're going to be having them with their coffee. They're going to be having them with their tea. And they're going to be just downing them with a monster. or um, Which with, is a no-no. With kids nowadays, um, just bang energy drinks. Um, <sighs> Pre-workouts. But... Um, like they're just doing that and uh the caffeine actually just negates a lot of it too and it doesn't absorb it well so um just sticking with water with um or even just you know milk or something just, just a regular liquid just a regular liquid drinking it no caffeine um, based um and uh that i also i wanted to talk about that too really quick um for some reason i don't know why this like past month Everyone's been coming up to me and talking about hydration. They're like saying like, well, you know, caffeine is a diuretic. No, it's not. I don't know. Like it is, it's a myth um, that caffeine is a uh, diuretic. Caffeine has diuretic properties, but it is not a diuretic itself. Um, so coffee, um, green tea, and does give you hydration um, cells pretty much. Like it does, it does still hydrate you. Yes, you'll be going to the bathroom a little bit more, but that does not mean it is a diuretic itself. <laughs> Um, wow. If you do not believe me, the lead nutritionist and dietitian of the Mayo Clinic, which just, you know, by transitive property, Mayo Clinic is the number one hospital in the world. 
this is the leading nutritionist and dietitian of the number one hospital in the world, which is pretty much saying this is one of the best nutritionists and dietitians <laughs> in the world, is saying that it is not a diuretic at all as well. And if you don't believe her, you could she she was very nice in her article, mm-hmm. listed multiple, not just one, not two, but multiple loads of science and medical wow. research papers that were published. So if you don't believe me, you can go there. If you also don't believe me, well then believe my one, my my degree as well as my certification that also pub- published this as well too. Um, but anyways, <laughs> what do you know? I, right? <laughs> I, just, I just don't know why. Like it, like it's a huge myth on it, and I think it is. It just came down to well, it's like oh well, like, I notice I get really mm-hmm. thirsty, and it's like well, you're probably getting really thirsty just because you're peeing. But that doesn't like correlation is not like causation is not correlation kind of thing. Um, if you drink a lot of water you're gonna also pee a lot yeah too, so um but um anyways but yeah so try not to take any of your vitamins with any type of caffeine content it just uh really diminishes the um the concentration of, of that vitamin itself um and the biggest thing then too is research the brand of the vitamins you're getting um some of them have been linked to pretty much falsifying what's actually in the pills. Lovely. Um, and we talked about this a little bit on, you know, doctor with Dr. Organic and everything that, um, and then just personally, um, you, you, you heard it between us is um, with the supplement industry, so vitamins and protein powders and, and everything of that nature is not FDA approved or regulated. But what people like to do is saying like, oh, it's FDA inspected. And people just see FDA and they're like, oh, this means it's good. Mm -hmm. No, so all FDA inspected means is that the corporation, like the manufacturing, like building itself is is meeting FDA standards. Just pretty much saying that they're sanitary and they're health conscious and um, anything that they do make uh, is pretty much hypoallergenic. And if it's not, then they do clearly, they do put it on clear warnings of the bottle. Um, But the supplement industry is not FDA regulated um, and so a lot of a lot of pills and everything um, have been found to be, be like pretty much like soy and snake oil kind of thing like it's, it's absolutely it, it's just nothing um, so uh, there are companies that will show their proof um, by pretty much like showing their lab results of like uh-huh. what's going in it and um, so just doing you know just doing a little bit of extra research and going into it. Um, my favorite absolute vitamin pack that I do, these, these are all individual vitamins, um, is called a WAD pack. Um, I forgot the company's name, but I get it from Protein Headquarters. Um, and uh, I will, here we go. So WAD means uh, work out of the day. And it's a multivitamin pack, um, and oh, NF Sports. So that's what the company is is, is through NF Sports. Um, but this thing, it's oh wow, yeah, I can it, see it. It, it has everything in here. It has vitamin A, C, E, K, thiamine, uh, riboflavin, niacin, vitamin B six, folate, B twelve, biotin, uh, panathenic acid, um, calcium, iodine. Zinc, yes, iodine. By the way, we we went over this before. Yeah. Um, it, it's not the stuff, the, like the orange stuff that it, that you, they're they're putting on their hands. That is a sanitizer. It's something different. Um, uh, oh, that's even nicer. So the iodine as potassium iodide. Okay. So, so listed specifically. Exactly. Yeah. Um, zinc, uh, selenium, copper, uh, manganese, uh, chromium. Uh, this one I I've never heard of. I can't think of it. Um, it's an amino acid. Oh, it is an amino acid. I just can't pronounce it. Molly. Uh, Beninum, sorry, I <laughs> I screwed up. Uh, and then some citrus stuff, uh, grapeseed extract, um, and then their their own thing, which is uh, bioperin, and it's copyrighted, but it's a black pepper extract with other stuffs in it. But it has pretty much everything that you would need in it um, as individual pills, and I think it's like thirty five bucks for like thirty servings or something like that. That's nice. Um, I want to know that. Which is yeah, really really cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, as you can see from a picture, yeah, there's yeah, like two, four, six, seven pills in there. Um, and that's what's nice too, because it's all one pack. I'm not mm-hmm. trying, you know, just to, 
yeah and individually try to pull these bottles out in my messy cabinet <laughs> exactly so um yeah i think it's like 35 bucks for like 30 packs of it so you know just a little over a dollar a pack um i get mine at protein headquarters um and I, I i do a lot of my shopping there for my vitamins and supplements um because it's just a local small business so i, I want to support them as much as i can the cbd stuff's good too we got a bottle of their cbd drip mm -hmm. um stress relief and I know a lot of gas stations now. I've started uh, basically. Yeah. I've had the cheap ass products of CBD, and I've we've gotten a bottle from there for headquarters. Yeah, and for me for like my sipping, you know, I, I take the this like stress relief, if you will, whatever. Pop it in and taste not that bad, and and it actually helps me like you know mellow out and shit, you know. So yeah. I would say protein headquarters just to go off what Garrett was saying is. I think, you know, for they, a small business, they have great quality products and they, great they, staff. They, they don't screw around. Everything that's in their, their store are products that they personally use and personally endorse. So you know it, it, it's good stuff. And because um, since they're endorsing it and, and used it, they know exactly what's mm -hmm. in it, what it does, and how it works for them and how it might work for you. Um, so they could give you hands-on like uh, experience from it all, which is awesome. And um, yeah, they have a, a really cool like vitamins too. That's vitamin CBD, w vitamin infused, as well as um, uh, pretty much like mood enhancers, I guess you yeah, could say. Yeah. So they'll have like CBD plus sleep, C CBD plus energy, CBD plus relaxation, such and such. And um, honestly, they're they're really awesome. I used it for sleep um, before because I just had I was having a really hard time sleeping fully. I was just waking up really easily from everything, mm -hmm. and it just put me into a sound sleep, and I would feel so refreshed. And um, sleep is a huge thing for recovery for um, people that work out, people that are just in stressful situations with jobs, families, um, or whatever. And then it's, all, it's also very well needed for your immune system. So again, with going into winter, you're going to need a good immune system. So I do suggest looking into those as well if you ever do stop at Protein Headquarters, which are located in Oakland, Midlothian, Tinley Park, and New Lenox, and they do ship online as well. So product placement <laughs> for free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so definitely look into. I would suggest vitamin packs rather than just the. If one, what you're showing me, I, I, I prefer vitamins. the for the packs because like yeah. I don't know what. It, maybe it's just me being a visual guy, but okay, I can physically see what I need and whatever. And, mm -hmm. I thought though, I mean, personally, I was ignorant to the one a day. You know, like I just, I figured one a day would be fine. But obviously, maybe I like was, one one a days. They should be fine. A lot of company, like due to research, like now more modern research and technology, they they realize exactly what needs to go into them. So they do try and like again, like work the the concentration percentages out so they don't fully negate each other. Um, but if you do go that route, just again, drink uh, eat it with a good meal that has fat content and then stay away from caffeine um an hour before and an hour afterwards um just so they could um digest and be absorbed properly um but going into sleep then really quick because i know you have to do your segment and then you have to take off soon um uh sleep yeah so the best thing for sleep uh is um, the most recommended one is seven to nine, or most recommended one. <laughs> There's only one sleep other than Either a coma. Yeah. Right? Um, <laughs> but uh, the best, like the most recommended um, length of sleep is pretty much seven to nine hours. The reason why they, it's like a two hour difference is um, it, it really depends on your activity level. If you have like, uh, like a, an, I guess a normal stressing job where you're able to handle it, it's not overly bearing and you're kind of sedentary and you're not really working out you just kind of like take your day day by day so you could get by with seven hours um and it should be perfectly fine where others they could even have an extremely stressful job like let's say nurses or paramedics or um even like firefighters or even teachers um dealing with those helicopter parents man yeah um and uh they're gonna need like eight hours of sleep and then if you have those and then you're doing a, like an intense workout on top of it or if you are an athlete and you're just working out majority of the day you're going to need like nine um maybe sometimes even 10 hours of sleep but on average seven to nine hours is what's recommended um so the first thing that i like to do and i tell everyone and i, I usually work with them week by week so this is going to be pretty much like a crash course 
um, is the first thing that you want to do is try and set up a sleep schedule. Meaning, sit down either with your phone if you have if you do all your scheduling through your phone, or if you're old-fashioned like me, sit down with your actual planner and plan out the the day ahead and figure out what time you'd have to wake up to get that day started so you're not rushing around. Because mm-hmm. that's the first thing. You don't want to be rushing around in the morning because when you're going to bed, you're already going to be thinking and you're going to be stressed. Where You don't want to yep. do that. So you want to have um, like hour, hour and a half of time of waking up to, you know, do your morning morning ritual. Um, and uh, uh, so figure out when then you have to wake up. Go back like eight, eight and a half hours of when you have to sleep so if you have to wake up at 8 then okay then I have to go to bed at um, the very latest 1130 and I mean the the very latest mm-hmm. not the earliest the latest um, and you're like okay yeah so I have to go to bed at like 1130 so I'm gonna go into bed at 11 um, so yeah going into bed about half an hour early now when you're doing this turn off your cell phone or if you're using it as an alarm clock put it across the room I don't want you sitting in bed reading on your ipad Mm -hmm. reading on your kindle um, or reading on your phone because what's happening is um a lot of phones they do have the blue light filter but no one turns them on Um, right on right now (laughs) good boy um but they're going to be looking at it and they're going to have it like right up to their nose and they're just going to be like oh this is amazing I didn't know that my personality type uh, is an Idaho potato. (laughs) And it's like, okay, that's fascinating. Yes, you're an Idaho potato, but you're also being an Idaho potato right now by not sleeping. Mm -hmm. Um, But but pretty much just putting the phone on the opposite side of the room, which is going to help wake you up in the beginning anyways, Mm -hmm. because you actually have to get up and you're not going to hit that snooze button. Um, You're not going to be watching TV and you're not going to be like reading or anything. You're just going to be laying in bed kind of meditating and taking your day and just kind of like organizing it through my head. It's like, hey, this is what I did at work. Okay, that's awesome. That's what I did really good at. Let's file that away so I could do that again tomorrow. This is what I kind of have to do tomorrow. Okay, yes, that's at four o'clock. You know, just kind of go over the little things in your head. Not really stressing yourself out, just going over your day, what you really liked about it, what you need to work a little bit harder on. Like, you know, just regular meditation, a little bit of mindfulness. Um, checking your body and, and doing like pretty much like a recovery thing. What I like to do is just closing my eyes after I'm done going through my day and be like, all right, how's my body feeling? And I'd be like, all right, so I kind of like, like, I kind of like shift my focus over to my left arm and be like, okay, that's feeling pretty good. And I'll shift my focus over to my right arm. Like, oh, I noticed my wrist kind of feels a little, little strained. feels a little, little rough. I'm like, okay. And I'll go up to my neck. I'm like, all right, my neck is feeling good. I'll go down to my left leg. Oh, my left knee kind of feels stiff today. And I'll go over to my right side. I'm like, my right hip, um, a little achy, not worried. And then I'll kind of go along my back, and then I'll do do a full body, like another full body scan. Just kind of see how your body body is at the end of the day. Um, so then when you wake up, you kind of know how you went to bed with. So to see if you healed or if it got worse. So then you know what to do that day. Um, but yeah, so then usually by the time that I'm all done with that, I'm already super tired, just dead, and I'll fall asleep like that. And if you don't believe me, you could ask my girlfriend because she'll be talking to me and I'll be talking to her. I'll finish my sentence. She would start talking and I will be Out asleep late. and she'll look over me and she'll she'll, she'll probably, obviously I'm sleeping, so I, I have to be saying, this is probably what she's saying, is that son of a bitch. <laughs> I was just trying how, to talk. How did he fall asleep? And she, 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 I know this for a fact that she hates how fast I could fall asleep on a dime. See, Angie, the same way as she, uh, for me at least, I, the problem with, I don't want to say the problem, everyone has their way to sleep, I guess, but she has a TV on, and I can't, at this point, you know, like, I, I have to pass out before she turns the TV on, essentially, yeah. you know? So I guess I'm trained at this point to pass on a dime like that, and she's always surprised too. Like you know, once I get in bed, you know, I I, I think I told you told you last time we were talking about this. You know, um, with the Spotify sounds, whatever. You know, I put on yeah. my ASMR cooking videos with the uh, force that I'm out. You know, bam, out. And she's like, "How you do that?" I'm like, "I just get in a position." And also, we're gonna internship downtown, taking the orange line, and you have to try and squeeze in a half an hour of sleep sometimes mm-hmm. on a train that's loud, moving a lot, and whatever. You learn that's how to get comfy easy. immediately. <laughs> yeah. And so the reason why I also don't want 
people on their iPads and their phones and their TVs and computers and stuff other than the blue light is when you walk into a room, your body and your mind knows exactly what that room is for. Mm -hmm. So you walk into the living room, you're like, and your mind is like, oh, cool, I get to watch TV. Or, oh, cool, I get to go on the computer. Yeah. You walk into the kitchen, you're like, I'm hungry. Why? Because you know that's where the food is at. You walk into the dining room, and you're like, oh, cool, I get to eat. Because mm -hmm. that's where you know to eat. So if you're walking in your bedroom, and you're, you're usually watching TV, or you're on your iPad and stuff, and that's where you mostly do a lot of your stuff, your body's not going to recognize it as, oh, this is the room where I sleep. So if you take that out, like I have a TV in my room, I'm not going to lie, but if you look at it, those remotes probably have like a quarter inch of dust on them. Well, that's what's crazy is, is there's nights, again, for me at least, you know, I, I used to be big, it's kind of crazy, my early 20s used to be big on TV, but now like, I, I can't, if the fan's on or something, like I, I can't yeah. have light anymore, and mind you, you know, I guess I'm kind of picking the rule with the cell phone, but I'm all using it just to, like, I guess like it's a, as a tool to fall asleep, if you will. But my girlfriend, she needs to watch like cartoons to fall asleep, and and what sucks is that you know, I mean, if anyone listening to this podcast knows, in relationships, all about compromises, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have to unfortunately make sure I pass out so she can watch her TV, she can go to sleep too. But for me, at least, you know, I agree with you that, that your brain, as well as your body, they're trained to associate things. Um, based on your environment and, and, and all that kind of stuff too, and it makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes with me at least, you know, why I wake up at one in the morning with just feel like it's already like six in the morning, but it's not. It's one in the morning because the TV is directly, you know, in front of our faces, or whatever. So um, yeah, it kind of screws with you. You know, it's it's yeah. <laughs> and then the the last thing that I want to really do is um, how I told you. It's like if you're using your phone as an alarm, put it on the other side of the room because then you have to get up and you actually have to turn it off. Now the biggest thing that everyone does and um, is they'll set multiple alarms. Um, meaning they'll set an alarm for like seven, then seven Guilty. five, seven ten, <laughs> seven fifteen, blah blah blah. And that is very bad for you. Very bad. Wow, okay. Well. Um, so a lot of people's like, oh I just feel more energized and then I wake up and I'm like, oh I get five more minutes to sleep and I'm happy. Well like, oh, that's perfectly fine and all, but what's happening is you're waking yourself up from your deep sleep and so there are all, there's the stages all stages of sleep you have your your light your light sleep you have your REM sleep you have your deep sleep and if you're pretty much your REM sleep is where you, the rapid eye movement mm -hmm. and if you ever see someone do it it's kind of hysterical you just see their eyelids <laughs> just like just playing ping pong and like with their eyelids but then you go into deep sleep is and that's where you you really want where you're just basically comatose and that's where you could like lift up someone's arm and just drop it and they're just <clears throat> yeah <laughs> um and that's pretty much where you're doing all your have you're sleeping now um the thing with one phone phone alarms is they just blare you right yeah. away and they just they just take you out of that deep sleep where there are specific alarms where they they start off soothy um soothing and then they kind of like go up a little bit louder and then they go into something completely obnoxious and that'll pull you out of deep sleep put put you pull you out of REM sleep pull you out of light sleep and then wake you up and that's the best way to do it and that's just like natural wake ups that's what happened with me from so for, for me at least I only have two alarms I use actually yeah. I used to be Again, I used to be an asshole about alarms. This is what I saw at Starbucks. Yeah. Because I was like four in the morning shift, you know. So I yeah. had like four or five alarm clocks. Not for me, at least. I have an alarm clock for five o'clock and five ten. And typically with those two alarms, I have the alarm clock where it's like the like the small soft, and mm -hmm. then it grabs and rises. And I have seen, and it's kind of cool you mentioned that you know I've seen a little more of a, a pep in my step with those alarms compared to just a. Like the nuclear bomb up to go <laughs> off. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, <geez. laughs> yeah. Um, but pretty much what happens then, if you have those alarms set, you're going to be waking up, you're going to be, it's like, okay, cool, I have five minutes of sleep, and then you fall back to sleep. And what's happening is your body's just automatically going back into that state. Mm -hmm. It pretty much wants to try and pull back and go into that stage of where it was just at. And if you keep pulling your body out of that, you're not getting the, the full stages of sleep. You're not allowing it to go into all the stages of sleep like it should. So you're not getting quality sleep. Yeah, yeah. Um, so in the long run, you're like, yeah, I get five more minutes, and you could do that for half an hour, but your body's not getting that half hour of sleep. And, and, and so far, I've done that once where I've done both the alarms, and I, I, I think we'll, I got it work this time somehow, but um, it's kind of funny if I interrupt you, but it happened to me like somewhat recently, like a month or two ago, when I did that, and then it's funny when your body knows you're late, you know, like... 
subconsciously like I'm late for work. I know I am. Yeah. And I get up and you're like, oh, in a panic. And, and then, and like, then you look at the alarm and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And well, then I was okay. And all of a sudden, I slipped in my alarm clock somehow. Yeah. And I was like, I have 20 minutes to get ready for working out the door. And you know, my commute from here to there was like, yeah, which shouldn't have been speeding that day. But <laughs> long story short, yes, that, that that is true. You know, you don't want to. So I have two alarms now that get me through so far and and get me through the day yeah and then it's also at the point too is yeah some people they'll set their multiple alarms and they'll actually still end up sleeping through one or they Mm -hmm. do they they woke up late and their biggest problem is actually waking up they're up but they're not conscious they're not awake so i guess the new term is woke if you're not (laughs) woke you're not woke (laughs) um and the, the best thing is yeah you're setting your phone on the all the way on the other side of the room so you have to wake up you have to well you have to like get the covers off you have to swing your legs out you have to get up and and out of bed and then you walk and that just physical movement of get, getting up and walking is going to wake up your body and your mind and your feet are on the ground and then at that point you're like well i'm already up i might as well just go have breakfast mm, yeah. and then get ready for my day even if you like even if you like your second alarm didn't go off like how you did um but like I admit, I have a second alarm, but that's just because I did sleep through my alarm at one point. But it that alarm I still keep on because then it's also a reminder when I'm going throughout my day, my morning re, re, uh, routine, that alarm goes off. It's like okay, I know what time it is, and now I could get my shoes on and then go out the door. That's like that's like half. I, it's half that, and I call my oh shit alarm. You know, yeah. like just in case I happen like oh shit. And yeah. Up and go, so go. and and the, I I pretty much made that because then yeah I know if I slept through my first alarm for whatever reason which it did happen once and it was the weirdest thing but now i'm prepared and i have that second alarm i know i have 10 minutes to get out the door without being late yeah um but yeah so that's the best thing is yeah setting an alarm on your phone once if not twice and that second one is going to be like pretty much your oh shit alarm yes and putting that phone on the opposite side of the room and not like oh like within arms like it's not going to be within arms distance at all up. you physically have to get up and go on the opposite side of the room to turn it off and this really sucks for you rich folk because your rooms are huge. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you're going to have to get up and walk 100 feet to turn off the alarm. Where me, I have to I have to wake up and I have to walk 5 feet. Yeah. Poor. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so setting, uh, pretty much sitting down the day before, figuring out your schedule, uh, figuring out when you, have to, when you should be at least in bed or the latest uh, in bed by eight and a half hours and then trying to get into bed half an hour before that and within that half an hour no tv no computer no ipad or tablet and no phone you are just kind of sitting there meditating going about like figuring out what happened throughout your day what you liked about it what you didn't like what you would fix how you fix it and then doing a body check feeling how your body is and that's going to be to the point where your your heart rate is calmed down your breathing rate is calmed down you yourself are just completely calm you can fall asleep you get about eight and a half to nine hours of full solid sleep you wake up to a beautiful alarm where it's going to be pulling you through all those stages of sleep and then finally waking you up you get up out of your bed you walk to your phone turn it off and you are awake yeah that's how it should be and that's what i really try and get people into and again i focus this with my clients and i I take it week by week with them um, so they could really perfect it. This is just a crash course. If you want to try and give it go, like give it your go at all at once, go for it. I'm not stopping you, but I'm just gonna say it is a huge change. Um, and usually with all these little changes, you want to do at least a week with every single change to pretty much get accustomed to it and perfect it. Now this is gonna be like possibly like 10, 12 different changes um, to your sleep routine. So it might take a little while to get used to it to perfect it and build up that habit, but um, the rewards to it are mm-hmm. amazing. So, awesome. Um, so that's pretty much what a little bit of what I want to talk to you uh, about is just, yeah, it's getting winter time, so it's going to be darker a lot more. You're going to get a lot more of cabin fever. Um, so worry about definitely your vitamin D levels, but also then worry about um, taking like just uh, enough of your vitamins and eating healthy so you could have a good um, immune system and get an immune butte boost boost um sleeping well and then also yeah just keeping up with your steady exercise so you could still keep that immune 
system running because yes we have to fight off flu now flu season is coming um shots are already going around yes. with uh geriatrics and toddlers and stuff and soon to be us and then now also with covid so um i do want to push this tom because i know you are on a schedule i'm very sorry fine, that i fine. did i uh talked a lot but yes thank you for uh your the dr oz moment um so <laughs> no, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna even have my. Uh, oh, I never drank this yet. Sorry, my bad. Are you good? Uh, second man, oh, I was gonna cough his cough his ass off now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is. Yeah, yeah next it time. It is good, but it just yeah, burned. Yeah, it's a bit of a burn. Uh, I actually don't really um, have a lot to cover. Um, in which I spoke to Garrett about um before we started this about comic books and yes, some issues going on. Yeah, this is one thing I definitely do want him to talk about. Um, it'll be, I'll, next next time I'll bring it up more um, yeah. because of the time restraints and I, I apologize guys, it's actually my fault for cutting it so short. I, I gotta get ready for a makeup, makeup class tonight for the Haunted House because we're opening this week, so um, but anyway, comic books, there's been an issue um, with DC and, and Diamond Select and people that are in the comic books know um kind of what's going on dc is separated with diamond um they're a big distributor and, and essentially i'm not trying to put my hat in the mix but uh people are saying as well as articles out there that diamond is pretty much has monopoly on the comic book distribution yeah um and I dc separated um with them in july but on top of covid um as well as shipments and it's caused a lot of um catastrophe within the comic book industry and, and a lot of shops are closing um i'll go into more detail about it next time because uh i want to do a full kind of investigation into it but what i've gathered so far and as well as recent news which i don't want to say right now um it kind of has impacted my my subscription if you will i'll leave it at that um and how i'm starting to see it where it's affecting affecting the actual consumer now in a sense too who's buying these comic books but uh diamond essentially um as well as just you know it's his postal service being over by covid has caused a mass um i don't want to say decline with comic books but it's a lot has hit the market hard but my main topic though is is as you guys mostly music you know um so uh, since between last podcast and now, uh, two albums dropped: uh, Deftones, Ohms, and then a, a stoner doom cosmic psychedelic band called Resin. Um, oh, okay, I remember. You yeah, them. yeah. Um, I'll start with Deftones, Ohms first. Uh, it was a good album. Um, you the know, best. It, it, what's that? The best. No, no, I don't know. No, I don't no, listen no, to it. It's it's, <laughs> it's a Deftones album. Like, and that's what's funny. You know, is it's you have like album is that's like oh it sounds like deftones you know or sounds like this band it, it wasn't really anything to write home about but i was okay with that you know mm-hmm. uh, their last album gore i wasn't really a fan of but this album ohms um it's one of those good i would say it, uh one of those good deftones albums you can put in the background it's good background noise you know and, and some good riffs here and there as well as some good um, um i guess melodic stuff to it too I highly enjoyed uh, listening to it when it dropped, and then finally getting the vinyl in because I'm still waiting on another vinyl, um, which I'll get into in a couple minutes. Um, it was cool to put it on the on the, the vinyl player too, but um, I'll give that album out of ten a uh, good seven point five out of ten. Um, definitely would recommend listening to it, guys, um, and listen to it, and, and, and you know, on a, a chill night or even at work, it's it's really good good background kind of chill and also heaviness and, and all around good album and then with resin um kind of the same same ballpark area i would say with deftones uh being that i've i've my brother has kind of swayed me into <laughs> um going down the room of doom metal and, and uh stoner metal you know uh resin is a local chicago band actually is it uh, really yeah resin yeah they're they are mm. Um, I discovered them in, in Bong Ripper <laughs> um, okay, uh, last Bong Ripper. two years ago. Uh, it was two years ago at a, a, a Sound Growlers Black Mass Festival, um, and it was just, it's a big stoner metal or stoner doom festival. But anyway, uh, the new album dropped, and and I got the LP. I think last this this past week, whatever. But awesome, awesome album. You know, it, it's one of those again. You know, it's it's very. 
nothing you know i guess necessarily right home about but it's solid uh definitely has some good riffs to it and um i'm a big atmosphere kind of guy you know uh last night i was telling garrett you know i i came home and i put a vinyl on and i don't know if there's many more people like this in the world nowadays but sometimes i just have like a glass of whiskey and put a record on and just jam you know i don't oh, like yeah. i don't sit there and watch tv or, or do an activity i just like to sit down and listen to music and um the new resident album i put it on and it's one of those awesome albums you know in my opinion that though i say it's just a it's just a okay album it's good but awesome in the sense where i could put it on and just ride the album through yeah. um and it was it was great and, and also i got the limited edition gold pressing where it's like a mm-hmm. sparkly gold press whatever and stuff like that it was pretty cool with actual gold or no 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 oh, I, mean, I didn't know yeah. if they put like gold flakes no into it's it like uh next year at my house i'll show you it's, okay. it's really it's a really pretty record you're um, a really pretty record but um for me dude oh well, thank you um, <laughs> so, so he's just gonna brush past yeah, that, no, that no, i appreciate that um Number one, again, like you saw my Facebook status, dude. I'd say my, my, my favorite album of the year so far is still Ocean of Slumber. Yeah. And that album, I, I, I'm always going back to. I'm always popping in my headphones. I'm always listening to a, a track, yeah, you know. You're, you're obsessed with that band, it seems. Well, it, it's, it's... They're not bad. I'm not... I'm not that's okay. But it seems like you're more favorite band now. Well, it's it's not... Um, I, I kind of hate this whole... Um, I used to be this way, unfortunately, and that's why I'm going to talk shit about myself in, this, in the same breath, too. It's... I hate this whole elitist mentality for metal or whatever. You know, you gotta like this, you gotta yeah. like this. It's like, yeah, especially the people that make fun of Five Finger Death Punch. They're just major dicks. Like, I you mean, just can't just let people have fun and listen to their music without making fun of them. And, and that's what funny is, you know, it's it's I, I I used to be that guy. You know, like I, at this point, you know, I used to be guy be like, yeah, if I heard, I was like, you know, if they like the music, you know. If, if well, if I like to go back and want to talk shit about you, but, <laughs> but. So I'm I'm just waiting because by the way, guys, yes, I like Five Finger Death Punch, and that's okay. Tom, Tom just does not. He just does. He just doesn't like him. For I had I had a short, very. Uh, what was that one album with um, hard to see on it? Uh, oh God, what was the album? <sighs> I said I liked them. I'm not their biggest fan, so leave me alone, folks. Uh, there was, uh, whatever, it was that album, like, I was jamming on it for a while, but then I just kind of yeah. like, eh, whatever, and, and what I'm trying to say is, you know, like, people, metal heads or whatever, for me at least, it took me a while, and, and maybe it's just me maturing, you know, to kind of branch out of that whole mentality, because there's other great music out there in this world, um, and, and there's other great, you know, genres, classical, I mean, hell, I, Lady Gaga. Oh, God, don't you talk. Um, and all Lady Gaga. You're the Damn one that right. got me into Lady Gaga. War is the Answer. Well, War is the Answer, yes, that's the one. Um, Which for, I think is their second album. Yes, I think it is, too. That was the one that I was jamming for a minute, but then I'm like, after a while, I'm like, yeah, it was kind of one of those I listened to and forgot about it. Um, but I, I'm not one anymore... And that's because a lot of maturing and also seeing a lot of the, again, assholes and, and you know, trolls on social media saying, it's all metal, it's all blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know what? I, I hate that mentality. Yeah. Because, you know, if you want to get deep into it, you know, it's like what blues. What is metal? Uh, well, <laughs> blues, you know. Blues was, in my opinion, and, and now everyone's going to, you know, either get behind this or not. You know, but blues was kind of the major influencer uh, into I would say a lot of heavier stuff for music, and hell even classical music. You know, um, once you get out of that, you know, at least mentality, there's such a wide variety of music out there that you like, and I guess that's why I like the new Summer album yeah. because it's a variety. I'm not like listening to I guess with resin. It's just it's just doom. You know, like that's what we expect. Deftones. It's it's Deftones. With Oceans of Slumber, um, why it's still holding strong number one. Now, mind you, there's still two more months in this year left that could yeah, change my mind completely, but um, there's everything in it. Like, it's multiple genres, and mind you, it's prog rock, but prog metal, I should say, but it, there's, it's not just heaviness, you know? I, I've gotten to that point with my band. We don't have to write, you know, grinding, fast-paced stuff, you know, to have a good you can song. You do a bit slower. You can do slower. You can uh, um, do a little bit of a, a tempo, a upbeat tempo to a drop-down. It doesn't matter. Like, you, you can explore and i think for right now why it's only number one's because they had no problem just taking a step back and going from a heavy sound to a somber or or melancholy feel to i guess upbeat in a sense yeah um mm-hmm. and 
that's why for me at least you know again guys if you haven't checked it out which you're probably gonna hear me talk about it next podcast too because <laughs> i mean you know why not let's follow the tradition uh check it out the album you know and and, and again deftones was good resident was good and then um i guess getting into other media things whatever it is october well i think also um i always i always mispronounce it so i think this is right um amaranth dropped a new album too yes they did and which i have yet that's why i actually i used to be so against streaming but now i love spotify because yeah, i can because just pop that. in my headphone and then and, well, and then also acdc released a new single see that's the thing i don't I don't know how since half the band is dead, but from that, what I heard, their kids are like playing the instruments now. That and for me, ACDC, I, I, I'll get more of a Black Sabbath guy. Um, I guess it's okay. Not everyone can be cool, Tom. Huh? Well, I'm not even saying that. I mean, I, I know they have their. I mean, I'm not Kerry King from Slayer saying they're not metal. You know, I, I'm like it's not my thing, and I personally, you know, I. I feel that it's one of those bands that they're good rock bar music. You know, if you're yeah. in a bar, everyone's cool, ever. But I'm not. Or like, if you're Iron Man. Or yeah, for <laughs> off your Iron Man, um, but I, I feel like ACDC the other place. But I'm just not a Craze fan. Like much like Metallica, you know. Mm. I love Kill 'Em All. I love Injustice, and, and I guess they're, which is where it, I'm gonna sound like a middle elitist, but I'm not. Uh, their earlier stuff, but I just kind of didn't care for the new things, which is okay. You don't have to. Bands change too. Yes, you yeah. don't have to. To constantly bash somebody for changing their sound, you know, let them change, and I respect that band more for changing. Although Saint Anger was a terrible album, still, I'm sorry. <laughs> God awful, it was just trash. Yeah. Um, but uh, and then other news I was much much right now is it is October. Uh, um, it, it is spooky season, as as everyone would say on, on the face space or the Instagrams. Um, and lately, uh, you know, I'm all your horror guy, but uh, I've been either watching The Boys season two, which I finish up. Or, yeah, today's um, or this Friday was, was the last season finale. Finale. Which I, I don't you seen it. Don't win it for me. I no, I'm watch watching it. it tonight. Okay, um, and then I kind of revisited, uh, uh, which my girlfriend, she's so cool. Uh, my favorite movie, I recommend. You know, it's a classic for me now. Trick or Treat. You know. Oh god. She, uh, she actually got me the the vinyl, the limited edition vinyl um, uh, variant with like the uh, picture discs and all that kind of stuff. But That's cool. Yeah, I have to show it to you in person. It's really awesome. But we watched that again. It's a good anthology Halloween movie. You know, it's definitely one of those. You pop it on and it goes well with the season. But um, I think next podcast, I'm going to come here and, and, and give you my, my top 10, top 10 Halloween October movies. I'm down for that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I already know what number one's going to be. What's that? Probably uh, Friday the 13th, number two. Actually, I... I it's kind of, we'll talk more later about that, but I've I actually dialed it back. Uh, Friday the 13th would actually probably be around like seven or eight. What? Yeah, yeah. I mean, once I kind of got out of that shell, because I, I can Jason still my Jason's still my favorite slasher. Once I got out of that shell and it kind of discovered more and more different movies, you know, I'm like, you know, this movie actually is good, but there's plenty more out there that I think would. Did surpass. you ever? Did you ever see the movie The Collector? Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. To me, that's still in my top like yeah, that, that is top, my top five. The, the, it's the just such a weird, has, such awesome a too. weird movie. But yeah, um, um, we'll be back and and then just let you guys know, um, as well as Garrett and I talked earlier to, uh, I, again, I I begin doing haunt season this month and he's a busy boy. Scheduling is gonna be a jump. <sighs> Um, so we're going to do our best to... Bitch with a W. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know Garrett and I are, are pretty much doing our best for scheduling, so we will be here again soon. Yeah, because it's not even just him, too. It's me me as well. I'm getting busier with uh, with the gym, with mm-hmm. clients. So um, we're, we're, tr- we're trying our best to keep to the schedule. We, I, like, I, I do apologize that uh, um, things have been behind, um, and... It's not as I guess the regular quality, but mm, yeah. we're getting back into it. Um, this this podcast is mostly us just coming to you saying like, "Hey, we're still alive. This is what um, is going on in the world," and doing a little bit of a catch up. So yes, definitely with the next uh, episode, it'll be a lot more organized, a lot more um, structured. It's structured, just kind of yeah. like you know, I guess the staples of what I guess everyone perceives or has I'm no kind of podcast. digging drinking during. This. So maybe we'll start doing. I'd be down, you know. Just uh, nothing like like a, like shit faced, obviously, but uh, you know, have like a different kind of uh, yeah. you know, uh, new spirit or beverage of choice, you yeah. know, kind of bring out the fancy in us. Yeah, 
kind of do like a, qu- a quick review of what we're drinking while yeah. we're drinking it. But yeah, on that note, guys, I hope you're doing well. Uh, do you take care of yourselves? We will be back soon. And and cheers, guys. Cheers. Yes, thank you for tuning in. Hope you're all doing well. Stay safe. And uh, you know, drink your water, eat your vitamins, and poop once a day. At yes, least. yes, once Go a day. Poop. All right. Peace. Peace.